Hi guys, 3D Hero here, and welcome to another Destiny 2 fashion alert video, where I bring you new and fashionable alerts from the community and for myself every once a week. Today's fashionable alert, I want to make a depiction into what the City Spec Ops team would look like when they need to crack down on serious humanly threats within the city perimeters. And I came up with a very snazzy and futuristic space look that looked personally great and came out pretty alright, and it kind of looks like a modern day soldier. I like to call this one the Spec Ops City Hunter, a deep terrain fighter who operates behind the scenes in Near Crisis. The design is more of a fashion show off rather than an actual loadout or build, as the current weapons I ran with is either a 50-50 setup depending on what type of content you want to go ahead and use it for. For example, using it in PvE is quite interesting and fun to play with, Are you using something new and different compared to the modern weapons used by other people. For example, using it in PvE is quite interesting and fun to play with as you're using something new and different compared to the modern weapons used by others. However, using it in PvP can also make you want to scream and shout as to how your final round didn't kill that person, how your shots didn't feel like consistent, etc. It's a it's a build slash loadout slash fashion all in one that you really have to play around with. But don't worry because you have multiple options to actually play around with. So you don't have to use the weapons I currently show. You can always mess around with other weapons that I do recommend. It's a very interesting build to mess around with and not take serious. But honestly, it looks really amazing because of the black and brown colours that clash with a modern day tint towards its design. And to me, it really does make me think, is this what a future undercover spec ops force of the city would look like? Like, you could really go anywhere with design and change the brown hacky shader to a brown omnum shader, or even go all black as long as the armour isn't changed. Think of them similar like the Vanguard, how the Vanguard has a much wider authority over the city and the personnel. And then you have these group of people that are more inclined to either going into deep terrain areas or going into like the cities and patrolling the areas and such. This is kind of my take on it. But anyways, like always, here's the current weapons and armor I use. My primary is the Enigma Draw, which can only drop from the Future War Corp Faction Rally package. Your secondary is a Marty Make, which can generally drop from the Crucible packages. And your heavy is the Flash and Thunder Grenade Launcher, which can drop as a normal purple engram but you have a better chance of it dropping through ranking up Devon K. Your armor is the following. Your helmet is the Rogue Complex A1 with the Hacky Shader. Your gauntlet is the Makena Sleeve with the Dead Orts Fate Shader. Your chest is the Dead End Cure with the Hacky Shader. And your legs are the Dead Cure 2.1 with the Dead Orbit Shader. And your cloak is the Wild World Cloak with the Hacky Shader as well. In total, this armor set will give you a moderate but not so great balance of a 5-6-4 in your class stats, which means you can take on a decent amount of damage, but you won't recover very quickly. So you have to pick your fights, and pick your battles, and know when to dip when things get extremely heated. So like I said, if you're going to use this in PvP, be aware that you probably will get outgunned and qu killed quite quickly against others. But, if you're smart, and you know to stick with your team, and you know when to pick your fights, that shouldn't really be much of a problem. For personal reference, you don't have to go with the weapons shown, as you can mix and match to your liking, but I do suggest you stick with a Agile and Swift loadout that will focus wholly on response, such as if you are working in Special Forces. So, if you do change my loadout, you will be limited to SMGs, sidearms, shotguns, grenade launchers, and ARs. This here will allow you to still be actively swift against others, while still allowing you some ideal weapons to play and fight with against others. Playing this loadout, don't expect a lot from it in PvE or PvP, as it's an average loadout to try and play around with at best. This is more of a loadout that focuses on trying out new setups to get you out of your regular weapon and gear routine, and more into looking good and experimenting, which I can say is a success. If you're someone that averagely enjoys trying out different weapons and want to look good, this is something that you can go ahead and play with and you know change up every so often. Most of your kills will be between you swapping to your main to your secondary 90% of the time, but this only comes into effect when playing PvP, as using the Enigma Draw in most 1v1 fights won't always work within your favour of netting a kill, so you will be switching to your Marty's mate, which equally is good but you, you must use it within your range, as much longer distances make the weapon less accurate upon each shot. And also the fact that because the weapon shakes a lot, I believe the weapon's frame is not a precision frame, it's more of an adaptive. So if you were going to try to add on a kinetic counterbalance mod onto this weapon, it really wouldn't it really wouldn't work, from what I've noticed. So if you want to be more successful with the weapon, use the weapon in more close to medium ranges. Think of it like a SMG with a bit more range, 
and a bit more damage. That's the best way I can describe the Marty's Make and how to actually use it. When fighting, I advise you to use your Marty's Make to weaken the player and then switch to your Enigma's Draw to finish the player off. As I found with the high caliber round built into the Enigma's Draw, it will allow you to properly take down players with ease. However, you can go ahead and use a sidearm to take on players in 1v1 fights. Just try and get the drop on them first, as the weapon does have a slight kick after each shot, which can make it hard to follow up your shots and take out other players. Now I've gone many games with using this loadout and I can say generally that I do enjoy it because it's something experimental and something new and you know it's just it's just a breath of fresh air. You don't have to use what all the common players are using like the Uriel's Gift or the Mida or the Last Hope. This is something that you can use completely differently. You just mess around, you can quick play, you know mess about with your buddies and such. It's something new to enjoy. However, like always, this loadout isn't specifically designed for competitive so don't think you'll be going competitively great with this loadout. And also one thing I've noticed is that when I'm using the Nigma's draw, in most cases, depending on where you go up against players, if you get the first drop on the player, you may kill them from the initial shots. But one thing I've noticed is that the more you fire with the Nigma draw, the more the weapon feels I feel less accurate, as if my shots aren't connecting. And I don't know if anyone else has noticed this as well, but every time I fire it, 9 times out of 10, the person will be on a straight about a silver line of health and somehow my final shot won't kill them. It's incredibly annoying, but with my exotic gauntlets with me, it allows me to reload my weapon really, relatively quickly, so I can quickly reload my weapon, ADS, and I'll be back in the game again. But in PvP, this isn't always the case, and this is more of a deal breaker. As you can't use the Enigma's draw in 1v1 fights and expect to come out pretty clean. You will either kill the person, have them down to silver health, or you pretty, or you pretty much just die. And I've noticed I die a lot using the primary weapon on its own. So you need to always try to predict when's the right time to switch out to your second weapon. So go Marty's make and then switch to your sidearm. Because 9 times out of 10 for your sidearm, with his high caliber rounds built into the weapon, players will tend to try to either fight back or run away. With high caliber rounds, you can basically make them flinch to the where the final shots from the player won't connect to you, but you will have a high chance of killing them. That's a little tip that I've kind of noticed in when I'm playing the Crucible using this weapon and loadout. Now if you don't have the Enigma's draw, you can switch to the Bat King or the Minimum Distance, or better off switch to a different weapon category. As long as it's the one I recommend earlier, just make sure if you're going to use the Macarena Sleeve Exotic, make sure you at least have a sidearm with you to fully make use of his perk. If you don't have the Exotic, then I advise you to go ahead and switch out to some other arms, something that kind of fits into the Spec Ops and slim look for your Hunter. The Flash of Thunder Grenade Launcher is great for taking out big or singular targets as long as you're using the Concussion Rounds, as they have a much wider blast radius than the Flashbang Rounds. And also have a better chance at one shot on players and enemies if it lands a direct hit or explodes when near them, you, but this is a weapon you have to play around with and get used to as it doesn't have proximity detonation. So you need to time your explosion to the point where it's near players or else you end up missing and get yourself killed. But I honestly recommend you play with this weapon as you can get pretty crazy with killing players in one shot, back to back, if you catch them off guard. I do remember I had one game when I was using it in Crucible, and I remember just landing multiple shots onto single up targets and killing them within one shot. And it felt amazing because the thing is, using the single shot grenade launchers, they're not the best because you have to predict when to let go of the trigger so the explosion is timed. And 9 times out of 10, you don't really want that in the Crucible. 9 times out of 10, you want something that reacts and hits fast. You want something that has proximity or something that has large blast radius. Which, this weapon does have a large blast radius, but like I said, you have to time it with the trigger. So that's why I recommend that if you want to get really good with this weapon, either go into PvE or go into Quick Play and test it out. Go ahead, test it out, fire it, play around with it, do whatever you can, from singular targets to large targets, and see how much you can actually time your explosions. Okay, if you can time it perfectly, 9 times out of 10, you do absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna be probably focusing a lot more in the near future using other grenade launchers because a lot of people say that these type of grenade launchers are terrible, like the fighting line and such, but it's more of how you use them in the crucible and how you use them in PvE to how they can be properly effective. If you can find a suitable and playable loadout and know how to properly use the grenade launcher, you can do pretty good. And honestly, the grenade launchers, they really do remind me of the pulse rifles back in D1, where a lot of people said that they were unusable in the crucible and they were terrible and such, and they were to a degree, 
But for me, when I use Pulse Rifle back in D1, just through time and playing, you can get really good with them. And you can get really crazy when it comes down to getting kills. Using this setup in PvE is pretty fun. If you want to experiment more with just using sidearms and grenade launchers, which can really fill in the gap of passing the time and challenging yourself to master sleeper weapons when no one's looking or actively trying the other weapons out in game, which can give you a leg up in the future if they get buffed. This loadout, like I said, is more towards the design and experimentation rather than it being a Crucible or PvE killer build, which it can be still if you switch weapons up to fit into your playstyle and in game modes. So if you ever want to be a Spec Ops Hunter from the city and want a day set up that is based around them, then look no further than this loadout. I can only say that this loadout is actually fun to play around with. You will pull your hair out in many occasions. And like I said, PvE, it plays great. Using a sidearm, using a grenade launcher and using an AR in combination and using your exotic that honestly, although a lot of people will sleep on it and say that it looks terrible, it's actually quite good. Because of the fact that it gives you fast ADS, so you can quickly just ADS on a target within a few seconds. And it also makes you reload a whole lot quicker. To which it's almost ridiculously fast of how quickly you can reload your weapon. Honestly, this loadout, I really do enjoy it. I, I can say I actually love this loadout. And I honestly recommend you guys actually go ahead and play around with it. Or just go ahead and play around with the weapons I've chosen, or just the gear. Because honestly, you won't be disappointed. Well, to, to a degree, I guess. So, that is the end of my video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then by me leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by me leave a dislike. I understand. I'll look back over the video. I see what I need to improve in the near future, and I'll get straight back to you guys. So, once again, guys, thank you all for watching, and I do hope to see you again soon.